Hey, welcome again. We're in Lamentations chapter 5, verses 7 to 9 this time are our reading. And here's what it says. Our fathers sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. Servants rule over us. There is none to deliver us from their hand. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. So again, this chapter is the last of five chapters here in Lamentations. This is talking somewhat about God's restoration, this chapter in general. But what we have here are many indicators in these first sections here, and all the way through, actually, of the desolation that the people have come to. Uh, Babylon armies have come and gone. Many have been killed. Others have been taken away. Many of them to captivity in Babylon. They're going to die over there in Babylon, most of them. But here's a, a, a scrappy group that's left, and they're struggling to find something to eat. They're struggling to survive. And so notice what it said there in verse 7. Our fathers sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. Now, this isn't bearing personal guilt. We all have personal guilt, and then there's, there's a broader kind of consequence that comes upon us. I live in a sinful world, so do you. If, if I'm driving today and somebody is drunk and they cross the center line and I'm killed in an automobile accident because they cross the center line because they're drunk as a skunk and I'm not, it's, it's not because I'm personally guilty. It's not because it's like the tower that fell on all those people Jesus mentioned. He said that wasn't because of their personal guilt. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time in a sinful world. If you're killed by a drunk driver, you're in the wrong place in the wrong time in a sinful world. So the consequences are always there. Our fathers sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. That's another way of saying we're really experiencing the consequences for their apostasies, their apostasies to the God of heaven, the King of heaven. If you're a child and your parents are smoking, you may get cancer from secondhand cigarette smoke. Is it you personally guilty? No, you're just in a situation, you, you just are in that situation in a sinful world. So what you have here is these people are suffering, but really those that got them into this mess, the, the princes, the, the priests, the false prophets, and the kings that got them into this mess in the kingdom of Judah, they're all either dead or carried away to Babylon, right? But here are the people that are left, and they're kind of bearing the brunt of, of the consequences of that. So we're living in a world where we experience many consequences. They may not be directly for our personal guilt, but notice what you have here. Servants ruling over them. There's nobody to deliver. They feel alone. Uh, just getting food is difficult for them. And there's violence, the sword in the wilderness. So you see, it's very dangerous to live in a nation that's been chastened by God because of its wickedness. But God will still use us. He will still bring us back. He has a better plan for us. And in the New Jerusalem, mentioned in the book of Revelation, the last chapters, we find that there will be no violence there. There will be no hurting or destroying in all of God's holy mountain. Look at Isaiah 35. God has a beautiful day ahead of us with none of this oppression. But along the way, we want to become more like Jesus, more unselfish, more seeking to serve others, and God will reward that. It's not that we're really doing it for a reward, but it's just the way that God is. He wants us to become more like he is, and that's what I want, and I believe that's what you want. We want to become more like God is, more outward focused toward the good of others. Friend, at the end of the day, here's the lesson. At the end of the day, God is our only hope. Every other thing is going to come to nothing. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for being our hope. It doesn't bother us that you are our only hope. It's good news. There's somebody ultimate we can trust to, someone whose hands were nailed to the cross in my place. Oh, Lord, thank you. Your mercies are new every morning. Bless, we pray, each of us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Hey, as this day begins, you and I, were on the starting line. And if we take this day step by step with God, this is going to be a good day, no matter what comes to you. God be with you.